Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Clutch X. Uh, to my left, we have Jason from Geonomic Labs and we are going to be showing off our joint project for today's uh, video. So stay tuned. All right guys, so today's video, uh, we have Jason here. I'm gonna let him introduce himself and what he does and having his background in the hobby. And uh, Jason, yeah, take it away. Hey guys, my name is Jason. Uh, my company name is Genomic Labs, or my brand, if you wanna call it that. Uh, you know, we're based out of LA, and I've been uh, breeding ball pythons for roughly three years now. This would be my third year and we just want to show you guys something that we're going to be working on together reveal this joint project that we're going to have going on and you know just get excited for the future of this project that we're going to show you guys today all right cool man but you know just to kind of give them a little bit of a a background story on you um, i know you, you okay. also work with a lot of like if you want to reveal them you do work, work with a lot of like genes that aren't really work with a lot, kind of more on the yeah, outskirts of the uh, industry. Would yeah. you mind sharing kind of like the genes that you're working with currently? Maybe uh, quite interesting. I like, yeah, I like to uh, work with genes that are either underrated or not a lot of people are paying attention to that, in my opinion, have a lot of potential in the, in, you know, in the, in the market or, you know, have a lot of potential genetically when combining to combos and stuff like that. Basically, uh, I just want to uh, be able to produce things that are new, fresh, and you know, just things that people haven't really seen before. Uh, basically take uh, a direction that's completely different from the mainstream. And um, I, I picked up certain projects, uh, just to name a few, like the Sapphire gene. I know a lot of people haven't really even heard of that gene. That's another awesome. one is uh, the villain gene and awesome you know an, another gene that's kind of known that we're starting to work with is uh, the extreme gene and I'm really excited for for those genes and we're actually going to reveal another of those genes that I'm working with right now that we're really excited about. Cool all right well without saying what the actual snake is uh, can you tell me why and it's starting for like an interview uh, <laughs> can you tell me why um, you actually got into this project or this morph you know why what interests you into this this snake uh what interested me in this snake i feel like it, the first, very first time i seen uh the the morph it was just stunning to me like i like the busyness of the pattern and just the coloration that it has the the color palette is uh really fresh and 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 new um I feel like it's very untapped. I, I do know that there are beaters out there working with that color palette and and just the, the different uh, lines that this this morph has. Um, I personally chose this specific line just because uh, I was able to obtain one of these animals from a, a very good friend of mine and um, I, I actually like the name. so. Before, so the name, the name got you? Really? The, the, the name, yeah. So and marketing counts. Marketing does count and honestly there there is another reason and I, I guess just you guys are probably gonna know soon anyways but the the line that I'm working with is dubbed a recessive by the people that are currently working with the gene but there's other lines that are considered codom of the same gene so like there's kind of that debate but the way that the that that this certain gene was um or at least the specific line was dubbed a recessive i i felt like gave it gave the project more promise in the future and it, it was just better marketing and, and uh, you know so, total. so just to clarify it a little bit it's almost like coral and banana right where it's yeah, the, yeah. the same gene just quote unquote, lines. just yeah. different lines. Exactly. And just one is considered or was dubbed, was labeled as a dominant or co-dominant, and one was actually labeled as a recessive. Exactly. Exactly. But they're compatible. They're very yeah, they're compatible. The the two lines have been uh, put together already, and they have been proven to be compatible. All right, cool. Well, without further ado, you wanna pop open and sure. show them your snake. I'm gonna get out the shot for now, so that you know you get kind of talk your piece.
So this project right here, or this morph, this gene is called the sentinel gene. Like I said uh, earlier, there are many different lines, like uh, speckled dot uh, carbon, I believe it's in the same complex, and this one's the sentinel, and one of the original lines is the paint, or the super paint, and that's the one that was uh, uh, considered a, a codom, or incomplete dominant. Uh, but this uh, line, the sentinel, the sentinel line is uh, considered a recessive. There's still quite a debate on on the lines and and what they should be labeled as when it comes down to how the genes work. But as you can tell, this is a beautiful gene and and it's so untapped in its potential. And we're gonna be. Uh, working a few projects or working this gene into a few projects and, and this see is what we can we can do with it this is just the base sentinel there's no other genes there is no other genes in it uh, this is what you would call the visual got it the visual sentinel um, so not not heads or anything of that sort um, not the heter heterozygous form, it, it would be uh, the visual recessive. Yeah. So I'm trying to, can you kind of show them off to the side a little bit so we kind of see the, the sides of the snake? Yeah. There you go. Oh man, there well, you go. One of Money the shot. craziest things Money is shot. Like this, this like speckling or graniting pattern and just the alien hits, how, how they're so busy, you know, how they're so granity and, you know, uh, that's one of the things that attracted me to it, aside from the coloration, the blushing that it brings up the sides. Yeah, the blushing is crazy. And just like the dark dorsal stripe that it has. Cool. All right, so that's actually a pretty, pretty, pretty cool uh, morph. Now, uh, so you guys obviously probably know, as, my, as I said on my last video, we're gonna be trying to plug this melt into um, Pied. Uh, do you have a reason why you actually like were interested in going into the, this into pied or or what came up about you trying to like maybe produce this into another recessive well i know i know you uh you have a lot of pied stuff and you're you're like you're working towards specializing uh in pieds and honestly uh i do know that there's uh one been been made in the whole world yeah and one of the interesting things about this um this project i guess is uh just that appeal of, of a double recessive yeah um and just the fact that there hasn't really been much done with that project uh the sentinel pied or or yeah. um a anything else added to that uh there has been one made i'm aware of and i do do believe that there are, are heads currently double heads uh but very few have been made yeah Pied well, and sensitive one, one, right? Very well. Uh, right. It's the in case anybody wants to look it up, I think it's the graffiti graffiti ball. Yes, yes. And what what it is is uh it's basically uh they, they used the paint line and oh, what it was paint. it was a super paint pied and I believe ah. that pied also uh, had calico in it. Uh you oh. can see it on World of Ball Pythons. If you're interested uh, interested at you know, and looking at that that specific snake, but that I am aware that's the only one in the world. Um, I haven't seen any other breeders uh, reveal theirs. If somebody does have them, they haven't been revealed. I I am aware that there are um, se several uh, double heads already uh, that are being grown up, grown out, or and stuff like that for future projects, and. I do believe that there are people working on that project as well this year. Got it, got it. But it's still very new and very untapped. And I guess like the end goal would be just to create the double double visual and and also like bring in other genes into that project. Yeah, got it. Yeah, so this is actually going to be his girlfriend for this breeding season. Um, I guess he likes big girls. Huh? <laughs> uh, this girl here is in about 1500 grams now. Um, she is one of our pies that's ready to breed this year. We have a couple more going, but you know, just 
it, you know, me too. When I started seeing into the Sentinel, and I think I told, uh, based on my other videos, I was saying kind of like how I wanted to get into the darker jeans, you know. Um, everybody, what most of the things that I've seen, especially on Pi, are usually very yellow, very orange snakes, which kind of what I ended up with first, right? But, you know, then I got the Sentinel Cypress Red Stripe, you know, the chocolate, the blackhead stuff. And then when I saw the Sentinel and the blushes that it already has with the darks that it brings out and the contrast, you know, that was kind of like the goal that I was looking for into like into the pie, you know, and then obviously too being a recessive, having double recessive visuals, you know, it's obviously as a from the, from a business standpoint, it holds value better. And then obviously from the hobby standpoint and from something that, um, you know, just doing this out of a passion, having a snake that's relatively rare, um, because as far as we know, there hasn't been a Sentinel pied been uh, made, so, because they didn't use a Sentinel line, you know, having probably a world's first or, you know, just a really rare snake, I think is a big appeal to me as far as a, a breeder, and especially being so new into this, because it's hard to be, you know, at the top of a project, you know, at this stage in the, you know, age, yeah. but, you know, yeah, man, I'm, I'm lucky to, like, be able to work into this project already and, you know, put these in together and hopefully get some not so great looking visual animals, but genetically have the potential to to make something, you know, pretty amazing and unique. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm personally pretty excited about this project. Uh, I mean, you can't be anything that's uh, double recessive uh, just to uh, have a clutch of double heads that, you know, are gonna be 100% uh, double head. It's just, it's pretty exciting, especially uh, knowing that the project is so fresh and new and there hasn't really been a lot done with it yet mm -hmm. uh, I feel like that's probably the the more exciting part yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, no um, uh, Anything else you want to add to this? Um, I think we're going over like 18 minutes. Uh, just lastly all I want to really add is uh, <laughs> There's a lot of, I believe that there's so much potential in, in this gene and in this morph uh, I'm just you know I'm gonna say it don't sleep on it because uh, mm. it's Plucky. it's so new that that it's just gonna blow people's minds away when more and more combos start coming out. Yeah, yeah, and the prices have been going up. I, I, I you know, heads now with a couple of jeans in on top of them are you know five six hundred dollars where they were. You know, maybe a, eight months ago, were even a lot cheaper than that. Uh, the visuals too. I think I've only seen one visual, uh, which is a pink sentinel cross, uh, for about twelve hundred. And I think that's yeah. more expensive than what I was I was seeing them. You know, when I first started. So the demand for these things are going up. You know, man, I'm straight plugging this gene right now. <laughs> the, the, the demand for the, the gene seems to be going on. And, you know, for me, frankly, too, that was another thing that caught my eye because, you know, when, like, known breeders started kind of catching on to the project, it made me feel like they saw something that maybe I didn't have the experience to see yet, yet, you know. So when all these, like, people started blowing this up and talking about it, I thought that maybe... You know, I need to get John on it too, especially, you know, you being so local to us. I think you're 15 minutes away from where I'm at. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, it just, it just, it was meant to be. Yeah. Uh, so any I'm other facts, excited. any other facts about like, you know, genetic wise, obviously where it came from, uh, similarities to other genes out there. I know this is Sentinel. We say that paint is similar. Um, there are, uh, I don't necessarily want to say lines because um, they they can be lines. They're currently unproven, uh, unproven to be compatible to uh, paint or Sentinel. Paint and Sentinel are compatible, but if they're compatible, then they they would be considered just another line of the same gene. If they're not compatible, um, then they're within the same complex of this gene. Got it. Okay. Cool. Um, so I don't have any more facts to say on the Sentinel because I'm just kind of jumping into this uh, But it seems like you kind of said everything about you know what the Sentinel is, right? Yep. Cool. Yep. All right guys, well there you guys have it Thank you guys for sticking to through an 18 minute video and hopefully we get to do more collabs And you know, hopefully you guys get to see Jason out in this on our, on our channel more often Thanks Yeah, for definitely coming. guys. Thanks for Thank talking you about for having, having me out here. No worries. Man, this is my first interview. What? Later guys